Uh, today we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, auto vision and machine vision in general. Uh, first of all, I'd like to give you just a little background on Redline Solutions. Uh, the, uh, I started the company back in 1997. Our headquarters are in Santa Clara, California, with offices in Central California as well as Southern California, and uh, also in Denver as well. Uh, we have uh, complete solutions, which include the hardware, the software, the services, the supplies and support. And we are a, a partner with Microscan and supply not only the vision systems, but also uh, barcode scanners, which are often uh, embedded in uh, systems such as uh, a uh, medical device uh, system or uh, other things that are actually reading barcodes and or items with machine vision. Uh, as a integrator of barcode technology, we have over 500 wireless networks uh, out there with mobile computers and installations worldwide. And we provide not only the on-site uh, services, but also depot repair. So if you wanted to uh, use the microscan cameras that we talk about today and you wanted to have those under a service agreement, we would actually administer that for you. Uh, what our vision offering are, uh, it really includes the smart cameras, which we'll talk a little bit about today, the giggy cameras, uh, the image uh, capture software, the engineering services, if you had a vision project you needed some assistance with, uh, the lighting that goes with the vision, and then we'll also look at some of the common applications, which include uh, QA inspections, assembly and subassembly part verification, uh, label and marking verification. And without further ado, I'd like to go ahead and introduce our special guest speaker today, uh, which is Jonathan Ludlow. Uh, Jonathan is the machine vision promoter for uh, Microscan and their resident expert on machine vision. Well, thank you very much, Todd. Uh, good afternoon, or I rather suspect good morning, everybody. Um, thank you very much for sharing your day with us and uh, taking your time to um, um, watch this webinar. Um, as Todd said, uh, my job is to promote machine vision um, within um, for Microscan, and um, so part of that um, job is to bring you the information in this webinar. So here's the agenda. Um, quite a lot to talk about, so I'm going to move along fairly smartly. Um, we've got to try and keep it within an hour with time for a demonstration and um, some questions and answers. I'm going to start by giving you a little bit of background on Microscan and their um, product portfolio, but really focus on the new product, which is AutoVision. I'm going to give you examples. Um, I will actually do a step-by-step -step of using um, AutoVision on the screen, if you like, um, and then do a demonstration um, of some of the tools um, using the software actually running. Uh, we'll conclude by um, just reviewing the um, new features that have been added to the latest revision of AutoVision, um, and then um, have some suggestions as to what you should do next um, to you know, further your study and skills with AutoVision. And then, of course, um, take some questions and hopefully provide some answers. So in terms of Microscan's background, uh, Microscan itself has been around for um, some 30 years. Um, they were the company that reduced the laser-based um, 1D barcode scanner for industrial applications um, to, to practice. Um, on the other side of the house, on the machine vision side, you see this um, somewhat complicated family tree, um, which basically was a couple of machine vision companies starting in the early 80s, um, evolving, changing names, adding technologies, um, mostly related to 2D uh, barcode reading with images. Um, we ended up as part of Siemens, a fairly large German engineering company, uh, in 2005, um, but in 2008 we became part of Microscan, and Microscan's goal was to be able to offer a full range of capabilities and products um, from the uh, 1D barcode uh, reading through 2D uh, barcode reading with images right through the kind of control solution that you can implement with machine vision. 
Now Microscan itself um, belongs to a larger parent company which is actually an English company. Um, it's a holding company for um, some of the leaders in uh, laboratory instrumentation, process control instrumentation, and industrial controls. Um, when I became part of Microscan, uh, saw some of those names there, I was very um, pleased uh, to see that we were in very good company. Now, in terms of machine vision, uh, Microscan goes to market through um, skilled partners, um, such as Redline Solutions. And we believe this is very important that you should have a, um, a reasonably local skilled partner to deal with, um, to support you with evaluations and provide technical support um, for a machine vision installation. So now let's take a little further look at um, Microscan product portfolio. Um, here is an illustration that shows the, the breadth of the portfolio um, from very small, very compact um, uh, 1D readers designed for embedding in systems up through industrial uh, 1D barcode readers um, through the imager-based 2D um, barcode readers, which also, of course, also can read 1D codes, um, handheld readers, specialized verifiers, um, a product line of our own design of machine vision lighting. Um, that uh, makes us pretty unique in the um, machine vision field. Um, complete range of machine vision systems through um, um, gigabit Ethernet cameras up to smart cameras and the software and other solutions um, to support these in uh, particular industries. In today's webinar, what we're going to do is focus on the smart cameras that were introduced over the last couple of years and the AutoVision software that runs on these cameras. AutoVision itself is designed to be easy to use, simple software. Um, we tried to make it so that we could perform, um, so that you, in fact, could um, perform um, simple more simple machine vision um, applications um, without any help and we tried to make the software intuitive in that the you got instant feedback of any operation you did and um, also um, indication as to what the next step would be as you set up a application. So we call this machine vision simplified um, and it is indeed a, um, a uh, environment where we've hoped we've hidden a lot of the complexity um, to allow you allow a novice user to succeed with common applications. Um, sitting behind AutoVision though is a um, I won't call it more complex or complicated but shall we say a, a um, environment for um, dealing with more sophisticated applications called Visionscape and we uh, allow and indeed promote the progression from AutoVision to Visionscape. So um, as you get more um, expert or as you encounter um, more sophisticated applications, um, you can move from AutoVision to Visionscape um, on the same platform and indeed actually using the same application uh, that you've developed. One way we present AutoVision is AutoID Plus. The idea is that um, many of you are um, comfortable with uh, using images, um, 2D code readers or 1D code readers for reading um, 2D or 1D codes. And now what we've done is added the capability to add more value to these applications by adding some common machine vision tools. Um, over on the left here you'll see something we call the locate tool. Uh, that allows you to locate a feature which perhaps you could use as a reference for a measurement. Um, this basically you might call it software tooling or software fiducials um, to, to avoid having to position the part accurately to make a measurement, read a code or whatever. Um, the natural um, uh, pair of, with um, auto ID coding, of course, is the ability to read um, human readable codes. So we add in optical character reading and the ability to match the code in the optical character um, part of a mark with the, uh, sorry, sorry, I beg your pardon, with the human readable part of a mark um, with the auto ID code. And then there are also tools um, 
for what I would call um, mistake proofing or assembly verification where you can count the number of components that are meant to be present and check against criteria, um, check for presence and absence by looking for number of certain number of dark pixels or light pixels, or making simple measurements as to the size or the angle of a part. So these are the high-level tools that we add to the basic decoding ability um, in AutoVision and present it as AutoID+. Plus. Just taking another look at these tools just to um, see if um, so that you can help help you understand what we what we offer. Um, start at the top there. Um, there is the locate tool. Basically finds the position um, of a feature in an image. Then there are the basic um, reading tools to either decode a uh, 1D or 2D symbol um, and the optical character reading to read basically unknown printed text to answer, to answer the question um, what characters are in the string. We've also recently added ability to measure the quality and grade the quality of um, either the human readable um, text with optical character verification and the distinction between optical character reading and optical character verification is very important. Um, one is read it and the other is please tell me um, whether it is nicely printed. Um, the quality grading for um, 2D and 1D symbols is also very important. The next few tools here are the counting and inspection and measurement tools. As I said, you use these for um, assembly verification, presence absence checking, um, adding the extra um, um, bit of value um, when perhaps when you're already um, going to be uh, reading a um, auto ID code. Then there are some logic tools that allow us to combine results for output um, and also to match data, let's say, between um, uh, the, the string coming from a 2D code and the string from a human readable um, uh, text read by optical character reading. So those are the basic high-level tools. Um, and uh, here is another image uh, that shows you um, how they relate to the um, hardware portfolio, AutoVision, uh, Machine Vision Simplified, runs on our smart, cam smart camera portfolio, whereas VisionScape uh, will also run on the smart cameras, um, but also um, supports gigabit Ethernet cameras. And these are the this is the hardware where the camera is only responsible for taking the picture, um, and the PC does the analysis. Um, smart cameras, of course, the they are complete. Um, they take the picture, they do the analysis, and they communicate the results. One of the features of AutoVision and VisionScape and um, our um, portfolio is that um, we believe it has this unique scalability. You can start an application in AutoVision and literally just load it into VisionScape without any changes, and it will just run. And now you could add more tools that aren't available in AutoVision to make this more sophisticated application. Um, you also have the scalability of hardware. You can start an application on the Vision Mini, uh, which is a very small, uh, compact, very compact smart camera. Uh, move it to the Vision, the Vision Hawk, which is the next size up. And indeed, um, if required, move it to a PC-based system and use it with um, VisionScape Gig E cameras, um, all without having to change the app actual application. So OK, um, let's have a quick look at the background of the software. Let me just take a quick review of the hardware. Um, here is the Vision Mini, which we claim is the world's smallest complete smart camera. Um, the Vision Mini um, runs either AutoVision or VisionScape, and therefore it has access to the complete VisionScape toolkit, um, which makes it a true smart camera, um, even though it's in a vision sensor uh, format. Um, has a number of different resolutions, that's the number of pixels um, from um, basically standard wide VGA resolution right up to 3 megapixel and now has the global shutter to allow it to deal with moving parts. Connection to the host is either by USB or a serial um, connection, RS-232. A slightly bigger brother is the Vinhawk. Um, 
This is offered in one of its forms um, with a built-in autofocus liquid lens and built-in light. This is a unique um, feature in machine vision, um, and it allows us to um, greatly simplify the um, focusing of the lens, basically makes it automatic, um, which certainly makes um, this promotes ease of um, job changeover if you're having to move from a, let's say, reading a code on one size package to another one, uh, there's no uh, need for a technician to come and um, manually refocus a lens. This communicates um, by Ethernet or by serial and has a uh, brother, which is the Vision Hawk with the C-mount lens, essentially the, um, the same camera, um, except this time with interchangeable lenses so the lens can be selected to match the application. The um, C-mount version is um, available from standard with standard resolution up to a wide um, 2 megapixel sensor, which is certainly found to be very useful for label inspections because the format of the sensor, um, which is 2,000 pixels wide by 1,000 pixel high, uh, nicely matches the shape of uh, many things we're inspecting. Okay, um, so that's the software um, in general, or rather in broad brush, and um, what I want to do now is just take a quick uh, review of the verticals which we target um, this um, AutoVision 2. Um, listed here is packaging, either pharmaceutical, um, food and beverage, consumer goods, um, electronics, life science, or automotive. Now, these are just the um, verticals to which this, uh, these cameras are uh, particularly suited, but um, it is um, axiomatic that there's plenty of customers out there who are finding uh, useful applications in uh, other verticals um, for which the cameras are also perfectly suited. As I mentioned, we um, did target AutoVision to end users, um, that is people who are putting it into, um, using it in their uh, factory or on their own line, um, but we also find it's useful for OEM customers. These are people who build these cameras, uh, particularly the Vision Mini, um, into systems um, as an embedded um, code reading um, or measurement component, um, which they then uh, sell to their end users. What I'd like to do is look at a uh, few applications from these verticals to illustrate uh, how AutoVision might be used. This is, a, I think, a satisfyingly simple application. Uh, the requirement here was to see whether the um, cap was present on the bottle of yogurt um, and to ensure that the bottle had been um, filled uh, to the right um, right height. And here we have an application which is doing two very simple measurements um, with the Vision Mini. Um, it is checking to see that there are sufficient number of dark pixels present where the cap should be, and it's checking to see that there's also dark pixels present um, where the fill line should be. Um, if the cap is missing, it measures too many, it doesn't see enough dark pixels, and if the um, insufficient product in the uh, container, um, it doesn't see, um, it uh, sees too many white pixels as well. In this particular instance, we were lighting um, the container with one of our Nerlite, that is a um, microscan um, trade name, uh, one of our infrared lights. Um, all of our lights are um, use LEDs and typically are available with um, different color lights, including um, different color um, LEDs, different frequencies, including um, infrared. So there was that application. Now we move on to another application, um, also involved um, uh, food packaging. Um, here the goal was to read the data matrix on the top of a can. Um, and also read the human readable product code. Now, um, this was a case where um, it's quite simple application um, set up in AutoVision. Um, first operation was to read the data matrix and to um, output the content of the data matrix, but also to use the location of the data matrix um, 
to locate the place in the image where the 2D code would be read. So, um, so the decode tool was followed by the optical character reading tool. The optical char character reading tool um, also read the code and outputted it. Um, and so this, in this case, the parts, uh, the can could be presented uh, at any orientation and would um, both of the components would be read successfully. Uh, in the application here, you can see that um, uh, you can actually see the results being output um, um, to a telnet uh, window. Um, this would be going to a host via Ethernet at the same time. So this was actually been demonstrated in the 600 to um, 400, 600 part per minute range, which is sort of the um, the sweet spot for uh, many packaging applications. Turning now to something uh, in automotive, this was a label inspection application. Requirement was to um, locate the level, uh, so locate the label, um, check that it was present, read the 2D code, um, and then basically check that the label was the right size and had put been applied um, within some tolerance of range of angle, e.g. it wasn't um, too far out of vertical. Solution was a Vision Mini, which you see here mounted um, above the reading position. Um, it located the um, located the label using a reference position on the um, plastic molding. Um, these were used to locate the uh, edge measurements and to locate the um, uh, data matrix reading tool, and it would return the size of the label and an angle from one of these. Uh, measurement tools at the side. Quite a simple application, um, but another example of Auto ID Plus um, getting more value out of the system than merely just decoding the Auto ID symbol. One more example from Automotive. Um, this customer actually used the um, Vision Hawk um, for a number of measurements on a assembly of a, um, a clutch uh, unit. Um, first of all, we identified it by reading the data matrix code. Uh, there was a couple of other um, assembly verification um, measurements to check the components were in place. And the one I've illustrated here was the simple use of the counting tool, um, which in this case counts a certain number of black objects uh, to see that the correct number of um, clutch plates had been assembled in the stack. So in this case, a Vision Hawk um, compact machine vision system um, with the built-in light and autofocus um, and um, in this particular case a connection to um, Profibus through an external converter. Okay, a little change of, um, change of focus here. I want to talk for a few minutes about um, GS1, um, self-styled the global language of business. I'm sure many of you, if you're in the um, uh, produce or consumer packaged goods have come across the GS1. Um, it was an outgrowth or um, developed from the um, UCC, the Uniform Code Council, and the European equivalent, the uh, EAN. Um, they came together in the global organization, and um, one of the very useful things they're doing is promoting this idea of application identifiers and the GS1 format for 1D and 2D codes. Basically what they're doing is um, applying the standard or promoting a standard uh, whereby there shall be um, codes called application identifiers um, embedded in the string coded into an auto ID symbology, uh, it could be RFID as well, um, which allows the different components, such maybe the part number, the serial number, the date code, to be uh, readily identified by whoever is um, reading that code. So essentially it's a, um, a global language um, which um, allows anybody in the world to um, scan a code and be able to work out which piece of the code is the serial number, which is the date code, etc., etc. Um, I think this is quite important and is going to be um, widely adopted. It's already been um, identified by the Produce Traceability Initiative um, for um, produce. The FDA has just um, 
uh, identified it as the preferred method for identifying medical devices. Um, it's applicable in other retail situations and defense. Uh, the reason for talking about this is that AutoVision has a facility in it for checking the format um, of these codes. Um, as you might imagine, um, there's quite a lot of rules associated with the formatting of data in a GS1 formatted 1D or 2D code and many places um, where uh, mistakes could be made. So what um, AutoVision does, um, if this uh, feature is enabled, um, when it reads and decodes a 1D or 2D code, is check the syntax of this code. So for instance, um, the part number or global trade identification number um, uh, is what should follow the app 01 application identifier and um, global trade identification numbers um, are 14 digits long. So if the code um, doesn't find 14 digits before the next application identifier, um, then it will um, be failed as not being correctly formatted. Um, what we also do is break out the contents of the um, code into substrings and allow these to be separately checked against, for instance, human readable, which I think will find a very useful feature in AutoVision. So here's an illustration of this process um, on a, um, what I freely admit is a made-up label for um, a medical device, if dental floss can be a, assumed to be a medical device. Um, here we have the decode tool, as is decoded the 2D code. Um, because um, we have the GS1 check turned on, it has said, yep, this is indeed a legally formatted GS1 code. And believe me, I've seen plenty out there uh, illustrated and on products that are not legally formatted. And then has broken out separately the um, part number, global trade number, um, the, uh, I believe that is the batch number, and the uh, use by date. In this particular case, we've um, also used OCR to read the human readable version of the part number and the um, batch number and use the match string, component, match string tool to check that the code in the um, content in the 2D code matches the human readable. So there's an example of using a GS1 um, validation and, shall we say, deconstruction um, capability in um, AutoVision um, to do a, a useful check. At the same time, um, we've learned that the, we understand that um, print quality measurement is very important um, for 1D and 2D codes, and we've added the capability to grade um, to um, um, VisionScape and AutoVision. In the example here, um, ISO 15416, um, which is the standard for 1D codes, is being applied to this um, box label, um, to this um, direct print on um, a uh, cardboard carton. And um, this is the kind of grade report you get. Um, this, um, this example got a C grade of 2.1, and um, all of the components for the, diff, uh, the um, results for all of the uh, for each scan and for each measurement that makes up that grade is available. The same kind of capability is offered for 2D codes, um, either the ISO 15415 for um, typically used on printed 2D codes or the AMDPM standard um, which is applied to direct part mark. Now we also have a capability which we call custom grading whereby you can uh, essentially select which of the measurement components um, you will um, use to make the final grade and also um, select the warning, shall we say, good, fair, poor uh, levels um, for each of those components to make a, uh, a custom grade. And um, there was actually today there was a Microscan webinar um, on this um, t topic. Um, and if anyone's interested, I recommend them to go to our uh, website in a day or two where that um, webinar will be available um, as a video in our uh, video tutorial section. Okay. Um, oh, I mustn't forget to mention this. Of course, what we do for 
1D and 2D codes, so it would be unfair not to have the same kind of broad capability for human readable printed codes. So we also have optical character verification, that is quick print quality measurement and assessment um, for human readable codes. And this allows you to um, set criteria and make measurements that will determine the legibility of, for say, a, a um, date code or a lot number um, on a label. OK, um, I think I should keep moving on here. So what I'm going to do now is basically show you step by step how you would use AutoVision. Um, like practically other, every other application, uh, when you install it on your PC, it puts a little icon on the desktop. Click on that icon. You get a splash screen. And um, before too much time has gone by, you will see a um, window that looks like this, um, which invites you to um, start creating your application. I'm going to pay particular attention to the four tabs at the top. The idea, of course, is that you start with the left-hand one, um, move, move to the right, and as you move to the right, you're basically building your application. And we say this is simple as counting um, from one to four. So connection, image, edit, and run. So let's look at those in a little bit of detail. Um, when you start your um, application, you will see the, um, the connection tab lit up. If you select the pull down menu, you will see um, icons for each, uh, any um, AutoVision cameras that are connected to on the same network as the PC. You will also see a um, selection possibility for an emulator, which is a software version um, of the cameras. If you hover over any of the um, items on the list, you'll get a little pop-up that will show you the details of that device. Most typically, uh, you need to know, you want to know its IP address and uh, which version of software it's uh, the firmware it is running. Once you've selected a camera, um, you will be offered a opportunity to either create a new job, uh, load a job from a file, or upload a job from the device. Now, um, of course, the upload from the job from the device um, application is not relevant um, if um, it's an emulator. So um, that's what you would do next. Um, let me just explain what a job is. A job, in our terminology, is a complete program. It includes all the image acquisition parameters, uh, the analysis tools, and the settings for outputting the results. So call it a recipe, if you like. So let's say we are creating a new job. Um, we're using, in this case, um, we've got a camera attached. And we say create a new job. And that will immediately take you to the image tab. At this point, you'll be looking at an image coming from the camera. Um, you can go to live to move the part around and make adjustments. And you can set the exposure, gain. Um, if it has a um, liquid lens, um, you can set the focus. Or alternatively, you can have the system do all of these things for you. You press the auto calibrate button, and it will go into a mode whereby it um, suggests the best, it, uh, measures the best ex optimum exposure and gain, um, and sets the focus. Rather like um, the camera you probably got in your pocket or in your briefcase, or you take on vacation with you. So that capability has finally come to machine vision. So once you have got um, an image with a nice contrast, uh, well focused, and um, next step to move on to is the edit uh, tab. And in the ed edit tab, uh, you can then select a um, tool. And um, you click on it. It pops onto the image. You move its region of interest to where you want it. And um, instantly, you get feedback. Um, You'll get graphics to indicate what the tool, if the tool has run or not successfully. And you will see instant results in the um, job list for that um, under that tool. Um, and if you choose to change parameters, um, you, go, you get instantly see the results of that parameter change. So at this stage, you get the job working. You put the tools you want on there. Um, you connect them to each other if necessary. Um, do everything you need to. Um, satisfy yourself that the job is um, doing what it needs to do. To do that, you use this little panel on the left here. Use these controls um, over here um, above the job list. And here is them in a little bit more detail. Um, 
the little eraser. Erase is a tool. Uh, you can try the job out once and try it in a loop. Or you could um, set it so that it doesn't um, actually take a picture. It works keep over and over on the same image, sometimes useful. Um, you can select whether it needs to use an external trigger or not, and things like that. Very often when you're setting up a job, um, maybe the line isn't running, and you're not getting the, uh, the triggers, um, or you don't want the I.O. to fire. And any time a tool runs, you will either get a um, nice green check mark there to say it ran satisfactorily, it ran and it met the criteria that you set in, in its parameters, or a red cross indicates it's failed. Once you've completed that stage, it's um, time to set up some outputs. Um, just going back a little bit here, uh, you'll see that there is always this um, tool um, position here for inspection outputs. When you click on that, you get a little dialog that allows you to connect up to three uh, digital discrete, discrete digital outputs. Um, if you click on the um, parameter selector here, um, you will, uh, it will instantly pop a window where all the appropriate uh, results are available. And in this case, um, we've selected inspection failed and tied that to output one. Inspection passed is tied to output two. Um, that's a very common way of um, setting up the system. And so now when the job runs, um, the state of these outputs will reflect whether the um, uh, job um, passed or failed. Alternatively, or rather in addition, you can also um, configure the output uh, tool to uh, send data out through either a TCP or a serial port. You select the port, and then you use a um, little graphic window to build the string. So you'd select, um, in this case, we put down the header little text, um, results equals, selected the decode text, selected the co put a comma in, selected the o first OCR read, etc., etc., and this would come out as a string on the selected port. You could be sending that to a PLC um, or wherever it was needed. Once the job is complete, um, you then move to the one remaining tab, the run view, uh, put it into run view, and away it goes. Um, you will observe the job statistics here, how many passed, how many failed, what the cycle time, what kind of part per minute is being achieved, um, and look at the results here. So there we are. We've created a um, relatively um, sophisticated job by moving um, just from the connect over to the run view and um, linking things up. What I'd like to do now is to move to an actual demonstration um, of these tools um, using the emulator. Um, what I'm going to do is put together an application that does some locating, uh, it will decode a 2D data matrix, we'll do some optical character reading, and um, we'll count and detect. The overall goal will be to check this um, hypothetical label here to see whether the 2D code corresponds with the human readable um, and whether the um, extra overprint here, fresh today, is present. As an extra credit, um, we will then move on to um, putting a tool on to grade that 2D code um, in terms of its quality and readability, um, and do the same for the um, human readable printing there. So OK, so this is where I move to the live demonstration phase. Um, I will have to get to where I'm going to go. I will have um, um, selected the AutoVision um, icon on the desktop and um, popped up the application. So here we have AutoVision. Uh, no um, camera selected. I'm going to select the emulator. I'm not sitting on a network here which doesn't have any cameras on it, so I just only see the emulator and pop that up. Now, normally the next stage would be to, oh, so we can tell it was um, creating a new job. Okay, there we are. We've got a new empty job. Normally the next stage would be to use the image control to, uh, the image tab to um, get an image in focus, etc. if I had a real camera attached, but I don't, so I now move straight on to the edit screen. And here is the edit screen. Um, there is the um, first image. I've actually set this up with a um, directory of images down in the C, Microscan, AutoVision. There's a set of images um, 
for recreational testing use and here under Microscan AutoVision test images there is something called the food special label group and that's what we're looking at. We're looking at this label. So let's um, do something useful with it. We'll start by putting a um, decode tool. I just select the tool and it will appear on the um, on the image. Pop it on the image. I instantly get feedback as to what it's decoded and see it over here. That's pretty good. Uh, I think I now I'd put on the OCR tool. Um, you can see there's not um, many difficult decisions I'm having to make here. Put the OCR tool on on top of the um, human readable text. Instantly getting a little bit of feedback here. Um, the system by default has used the default built-in font, um, which consists of numbers and letters. It's giving me feedback in terms of the quality, uh, in terms of its confidence of um, decoding or reading each of these characters in terms of the color. It's not quite so sure about the three as it is about the four, five, six. And what I'm going to do here is um, I could have I, I could go in and teach that three, for instance. I could say that really is a three. Add that sample of that three to the font, and as you can see, it's now increased the confidence. The other thing which I would typically do and recommend in this circumstance is move down to a um, use a font which is only numbers, because I know that this um, piece of text is only going to be numbers, so I've moved down to numbers only, and you can see right out of the box um, this um, numbers only font has um, is confident in each of those characters. So here I have a um, useful little application. I'm reading the, I'm decoding, I'm um, doing OCR. If I ran it once or twice, I would be, oh, see, do you have a little problem here? Um, the OCR uh, window didn't fall on the right place when the label moved. So let's go and fix that. I um, wanted to do that to illustrate how you can use the, dec um, the locate feature of the decode tool. I'll select the decode tool and you'll see a little green lollipop here allows me to um, tell the system that I want to use the location of the um, 2D code as a reference. Uh, the little green flag here now says that that OCR tool is located by the, um, by the decode tool. So now when I run it, um, all should be well and the window where it is doing the OCR reading uh, and it's now moving um, in um, coordination with the location of the uh, 2D code. Okay, we said we wanted to do one more thing with this, which was to um, check to see if this um, printing was present. I'm going to do that with a um, presence absence tool. I just put that tool over where that printing is. Um, I can see it's telling me it's counting gray pixel, it's counting dark pixels, so it's showing me it's counting pixels between uh, 0 and 80 grayscale, remembering that white is 255, black is 0, so it's counting black pixels, and it will pass if it sees anything between 40 and this very big number there. So let's change that and make sure, tell it it has to see a minimum of 2,000 um, gray pixels, and now we'll run it again. There we are. Um, it failed. Well, there was no printing there, so this tool failed because it didn't count enough um, black pixels. Let's see if everyone else is happy. All is well. Okay. Now, um, I'm going to add one more tool to prove everything is useful and to show you how it works. I'm going to add the string comparison tool. And you see this tool has only two inputs. Uh, what needs to know which strings to compare. So I'm going to tell it I want to see the decoded text coming out of the decode tool, and I want to see the read text coming out of the OCR tool. So now we've really got something quite useful going on here. Um, we're doing an, an additional check, and let's try out the job once or twice. Oh, we get another fail. Well, in this case, one, two, three, four, five, eight. Um, so this is not the same um, string as in the decode tool. So this fails. A couple of other things I might do before I um, ran this job. Uh, remember I mentioned the inspection outputs as a place to 
hook up some outputs. Let me show you how that would work. So let's just say output one, we'll connect that to inspection passed. And output two, we'll connect that to inspection done. And we'll make it pulse that one for 200 milliseconds. That's uh, longer than you do with a PLC. Um, but it means that when I put this into run mode, um, so now um, we'll see, be able to see, observe this um, moving around. Now what's happening here is that uh, my PC is not keeping up with the displaying the images. I'm going to stop it again. I'm going to go back to the job and I'm going to put it into edit mode again. I'm going to go back to that inspection output, uh, inspection done, and I'm going to increase that to 500 milliseconds and that should give us a chance to see the images go by in emulation. That was a deliberate mistake. I uh, just told it, there we are. Now it's running happily. So there we have an application um, that we've developed and um, run with about four different tools in it in about uh, four or five minutes of time. Let's just do a little bit of more um, value add to this. I'm going to stop it. Um, I'm going to go back to edit mode. And uh, you remember I promised you that we would uh, add a um, code verification um, grading tool to it. So I'm going to click on that um, high-level tool symbol, um, push it, put it on top of the data matrix. And there we see that this um, finely printed, um, nice high contrast, correctly printed mark um, gets a grade of four. Um, so its detailed report show it passes with A's um, in all aspects of grading. So that could be used for um, to check that the pr um, printer is printing correctly and becomes particularly important, of course, when you're marking um, codes directly on a um, uh, surface by means other than um, nice high contrast um, printing with ink on um, a, a white label. We can add one more little feature to this. I want to show you the optical character verification. Um, this is what we would use to ensure the legibility and correctness of a fixed string. So here I'm putting the um, OCV tool over the human readable. I train it with the um, hitting the train button. And what it has done is it actually has um, stored and remembered um, templates of each of these letters. It's running this in the um, uh, tryout mode here. We we'll see that everything's passing happily, but of course, when it comes to the eight, it fails that character. Um, basically, it doesn't know whether it's a defective six or the wrong character, but what it knows is that there is um, um, ink present where it shouldn't be and um, ink not present uh, where, it, where it should be, and therefore fails that, um, fails that code. So there we have it. That's a quick view of AutoVision. Um, what I'm going to do is come back to the... Um, PowerPoint here just to show you the last few slides and then we'll be ready to take some questions. Um, hope that has been useful to you as a demonstration. Um, what I would say to you is that you are um, you can do this at home. Um, the AutoVision emulator is available to you. It can be downloaded um, as a complete vision of Aut a complete version of AutoVision um, from um, the Microscan uh, website. And once you've installed it, um, you'll have the same images that we've been looking at um, installed in the Microscan folder under AutoVision test images. So to, to wrap up, let me just um, give you a quick survey of some of the new features that were added to AutoVision in the 2.0 version that uh, was released um, in January. Um, the 1 and 2D code grading, um, either to ISO 15416 or 415 or AIM DPM, um, was added at that time as an option. Um, the GS1 check was surfaced so that you can now check to see whether the um, a code is a valid GS1 format and to break out the, um, I'll call them substrings, um, relating to each application identifier. The print quality tool, OCV, was added to um, find um, defects that affect the legibility of um, 
human readable text. We also added something which I haven't had time to describe today, but which is very significant, which is something we call Microscan Link. This is the ability to um, change some of these parameters at runtime. So for instance, if you needed to change the focus, um, um, the product was varying in uh, product variation or check product changeover, or if you needed to um, change a number on a counting tool um, or any other or many other parameters, you can do that at runtime. You can also use Microscan Link to um, get results directly um, over a serial or Ethernet connection from a running application. We now support the ability to store multiple jobs in the camera, and again, this allows for um, efficient um, and quick changeover um, without the necessity of, of having a PC present. Um, signals can come from a PLC um, that would um, take the camera offline for a few seconds, load a different job, um, and be back online a few seconds later. We support Ethernet IP, um, which allows, um, this is the industrial protocol that allows direct connection to um, uh, and a wide number of PLCs, in particular the um, Allen Bradley line. And in the other sort of direction of, um, of simplicity, we now have a web-based HMI capability. This means that if you connect to a running camera with a um, um, a web browser um, on the same network and enter the camera's IP address. Um, you'll be able to look at uh, images from that camera, get basic statistics, and um, see the results um, of that inspection displayed um, on the screen. So this makes for a very lightweight interface. As I say, any web browser, um, even for instance, a um, iPhone, um, if the camera is on the network, which has a um, Wi-Fi capability. In terms of speed, um, it's getting faster all the time. Uh, we've basically done, a, um, I believe, about a, basically a factor of four since the original um, uh, introduction of AutoVision. Uh, it's taking advantage uh, progressively of some of the hardware capabilities of the platform. And um, now we're well into the region um, where um, uh, packaging systems operate and we can keep up with them. Um, for label inspection in that environment. Uh, this isn't all, there's more to come. Um, this is a relatively young product line, and so we are um, continuing to add capability and develop its features further. So um, we've almost arrived at the end here. Um, this is where I suggest um, what you might want to do next. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, there's a capability to download um, a copy of AutoVision and VisionScape from our a download center on our website. This is a full, nothing left out version. Um, it um, runs um, on uh, your PC, and the only limitation is that it will only um, get images from stored, you know, um, from TIFF files, um, and if you put it into run mode, um, it drops out of run mode after one minute, um, but it's a, it is complete and very useful for evaluation, um, for sort of self-training, and indeed for developing applications offline. I'd recommend you to um, take a look at some of the videos and presentations uh, that are among our extensive connection on our um, training center on our website, um, a lot of good stuff there. And last but not least, um, to talk to your local experts um, with any application you may have. Um, I don't talk to your local experts, who of course, are Redline Solutions. Well, OK, thank you. Uh, thank you for your attention. I think the next stage is where um, I check to see whether any uh, there have been any questions asked um, whilst I've been talking. Thanks, Jonathan. Yes, we do have a couple of questions. First off, um, can you please explain the difference between OCR and OCV again? Oh, yes, certainly. I'm very happy to do that. Um, OCR is optical character reading, and basically uh, it's what you use where you don't know um, what the text is um, that's being presented. And the characteristics of a good optical character reading system is that it'll read um, text of relatively low quality and still successfully. So it's designed um, to work with no a priori knowledge of um, what text is being presented 
and to read um, fairly badly printed codes of uh, text. OCV, on the other hand, is what I would call the um, uh, penmanship checking tool. Um, it typically requires um, foreknowledge of what um, text is going to be present, for instance, a lot code, um, and it's there to measure the quality um, of the printing, which comes down to its legibility. Will somebody be able to read it um, when they pick it up on a supermarket or pharmacy shelf and need to read the, for instance, read the, um, the lot code in the event of a product recall? Hope that answers Great. the question. <laughs> Thanks, Jonathan. Uh, next question. When would I use a Vision Hawk with a liquid lens, and when would I choose the C-mount version? Okay, that's another good question. Um, the liquid lens is a great convenience. Um, we offer it with three um, fixed fields of view. So it, we call it the 15 degree, the 30 degree, and the 45 degree field of view. Um, so if your application fits into the um, field of view get with those lenses at the distance you need to work at, um, then liquid lens may be a good option, uh, particularly if you want to be able to use this um, ease of product changeover and um, automatic focus. Of course, there's plenty of applications where um, the product in terms of the size of the product, the distance you want to work at, um, doesn't fit into those um, in, into those three options. So if you want to look at a very small thing at a long distance or a very large thing close up, then you need to be able to select the lens yourself, um, typically one of these C-mount lenses, um, and then do your, basically, do your own optic selection. I should mention we offer a um, nice little tool for that um, on that as an iPhone app. I'm sorry it's not yet available for the Android, um, but if you go to the um, uh, Apple um, store and put in, um, just type in Microscan, uh, you'll be able to download this application which allows you to um, select lenses, either C-mount lenses or tell you which um, field of view you'll be getting with the liquid lenses. Great, thank you Jonathan. Um, next question, when doing verification, are there outputs from the camera that can signal my PLC to divert the item or to turn on a light or a horn or some sort of signal? Okay, yes. So um, the output from the grading, um, you can basically um, set it to pass or fail at a particular grade level. So let's say you were following the um, GS1 recommendations and wanted a grade C or better, you could put the, um, the grade level, um, select that as your output criteria and then turn on, let's say, uh, output 1 if it was C or better and turn on output 2 if it was um, D or worse. And this would allow you to hook up to a diverter or um, uh, or a warning. Now we should also mention that we actually allow for a intermediate grade so we can have good, let's say C or better, and you might select D as fair but you want a warning to go off so that someone would come and pay attention to a printer and then you might actually um, then have the stop the line signal um, go um, be attached to a, a grade of F for instance. So we provide plenty of flexibility there. Great, thanks Jonathan. Um, last question, can I store a history of verifications using AutoVision or any other microscan tool? Okay, what we would normally do with that if you want the historical data, um, if you're running with verification in VisionScape, um, you can use one of the, you could use the VisionScape um, runtime um, application called AppRunner to um, store the um, verification results, for instance, in a sort of comma-separated comma file that could be brought into Excel. Um, at the present time in AutoVision, um, your option would be to um, format the results and send them out to a um, uh, serial um, 
uh, serial port, either RS-232 or um, Ethernet connection, and um, have a separate application um, um, store the results. That's one of the, actually the features that we're looking at um, adding in the next version. Great, thank you. Um, that's it for questions for now. Jonathan, I think you had one more slide. Um, let me see. Yes, did it say yes. I think you probably wanted to see that one come by. Good, a uh, good. Uh, thank, thank you. Uh, um, so, I would have to say, but certain, certainly say thank you to the audience for uh, spending their time with us. I know everyone's busy, and uh, taking an hour out of a, a day is uh, uh, not something you can do um, uh, without thinking about it. Um, I would certainly be happy to entertain any questions that come up. Uh, you, what you see there is my contact information either by cell phone um, or by email and general questions to Microscan can go to our help desk um, or to our vision support line and as I said before um, of course red line solutions is your, um, your, your first line of contact and your uh, local expert partner. Over to you, to, back to you Todd. Very good, well thank you Jonathan uh, for an excellent presentation and overview of uh, Microscan AutoVision and VisionScape today. Uh, we appreciate your time and again as anybody has questions feel free to contact us at Redline. You can go to your uh, local uh, sales rep or simply uh, come to us via the web if uh, this is your first interaction with us and uh, send an email in or give us a call and we'd love to help you with your uh, vision solution. So with that, that uh, concludes our webinar for today.